placement side minor skate and it's probably the least flashy of all the moves that we're going to show you today but also probably the most important why would you want to know this well especially if you're a beginner and you're um, you're small you're going to be spending a lot of the time on your back with a bigger stronger guy holding you down in the side mount position Big athletic guys, this is the, their favorite place to hold people. They like to get them in a restless cradle or a, a Yoko Shigatami or a judo hold down and just squeeze onto them in side mount. If you understand what I'm going to show you now and understand the concepts behind it, it will be very difficult for someone to hold you in side mount. You'll be able to escape from even the biggest, strongest guy holding you in that position. So this is how we do it. The first thing I'm going to show you guys is a little drill you can do by yourself to improve your side mount escape or the specific side mount escape that I'm going to show you. And the way it starts is you'll be lying on your back. You will have one foot up, stepping on the inside of your knee and that foot will be pushed away by this knee. So the way I remember it is, this is the hammer and this is the nail. The hammer is always driving into the nail to push it that way a little bit. The second thing, probably the most important thing, is that you want your arms in the correct position. You want both of your hands as close to your neck as possible here to defend against chokes. And you want your elbows locked in onto your ribs. In fact, I call this the lock-in position and it's incredibly important for a whole bunch of different moves in Jiu Jitsu. It's where your arms are in their strongest position when your elbows are locked in against your ribs. So we want to be in, in that position when we're in the side mount. But the drill looks like this. From our start position, you're going to take this foot off your knee, lift both feet off the ground, and you're going to explosively bridge up into the air. From there, you're going to turn to your side, snake your hips, and then you're going to thread your bottom knee through to square up again. There, and you're back in start position. So once more, elbows in, foot on your knee, take this foot off, take the other foot off, explosively stamp into the ground, turn to your side, get on the outside of your deltoid, snake your hips up, then your bottom knee threads through, and you're back in the start position. So now let's look how that's going to work with the partner. My arms, when I said keep them locked in, the reason is this. What I want to do is make a cradle using my wrists, forearms, and elbows. And that cradle will catch his weight as Jason puts his weight on top of me. By keeping this cradle between him and I, I have a platform from which I can generate leverage. Very important as well is this hand, the one that's closest to his head and neck. I need to take some cloth. I need to have a grip over here, either on the top of his trap here, or even better with the thumb inside. The reason for this is that this hand is just floating around. <clears throat> Without any connection to his body, he can slap a Americana on and tap me out. So really important, take a grip here. Besides that, it also gives me a really big leverage point against him because I can drive my wrist, this bone, sharp bone of my wrist, right into his, his track here. And that will stop him from putting too much weight on, on me. That's a really powerful little leverage point right there. The second thing is that I want this elbow, the far elbow. So we have the near one, which is the one in his neck, and the far one. I want the far one underneath pretty much his belt line. So running across there. Once my arms are in this position, I will know I'm ready to do the side mount escape. And this knee, remember I mentioned earlier that this one is the hammer and this one is the nail. The reason I'm going to be doing that is if Jason makes a mistake or if my opponent makes a mistake and lifts his hips too high, it will naturally, the hammer will naturally drive the nail into place and that will start my guard replacement straight away. So the first thing, I get my cradle in place, have my knee driving up against him, and then I'm going to feel, okay, his weight's positioned correctly, it's time to start the escape. 
Now, what a lot of people teach is they teach you to put your foot in the ground and bridge up. The problem with doing this is it doesn't create any space, especially if my opponent's holding me tight. I can bridge as hard and as high as I want, but there's no space being created here between his torso and mine. So what I use for this movement is called the stamp bridge. And basically, it's just a bridge done at a faster speed and using my feet to drive him to the ground even harder. So it looks like this. He's holding me tight. I'm going to lift both feet off the ground, and then I'm going to stamp them hard into the ground as I drive my elbows back. So what I've done there is I've transferred the energy from the floor through my legs, through my hips, and this is the important detail. From my hips, it goes into my elbows as I throw them back. My hands stay close to my neck. I'm not pushing my hands away like a bench press, right? Because that's actually a really weak movement in Jiu-Jitsu. It's far stronger to use your elbows. When I do that, not only will it create space between my opponent and I, but my arms will keep him locked away from me for a split second, which is what all I need. So the stamp bridge looks like this. Once I've done that, I've created a bunch of space here. All I do is pivot my hips so that the knot of my belt is facing towards him and slide my butt out. And then from there, it's a simple case of threading my bottom knee into the gap here, pushing down and away, taking my leg out and locking the guard.